going and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Eddie, and today we're checking out a gaming laptop by the guys over at Acer. It's the Acer Predator 15, and this model uh, that I have in particular is the G9-591G, the 15.6 uh, inch screen model. Now this has been released to sort of compete with Alienware, which might be why it's called the Predator. But maybe not. Uh, maybe it's just a coincidence since Acer uses their Predator naming on a bunch of other things as well. Now let's first start out then with the uh, looks then. And looks wise, this guy is an absolute beast. It is a really big, uh, quite chunky gaming laptop, that's for sure. It's definitely um, pretty huge. It has super aggressive styling. I mean, <laughs> this guy is serious and this guy is not minimalistic at all. It is uh, really crazy. It's got this huge Predator logo on the back. And, you know, even when you uh, open it up and have a look, it's very, very angular. It's very um, serious, you know, made for gaming, not here to muck about. And it's got these uh, large red vents in the front. All the red and black kind of reminds me of, you know, an ROG laptop at first look. You might mistake it for one. But, of course, when you see the Predator, you're going to know otherwise. Uh, so, yeah, that's quite interesting. And, I mean, looks-wise, uh, I really like it. It's got this soft-touch material, which I also quite like. It's a bit different. I mean, color scheme-wise, it's pretty standard. But, um, yeah, I, I think design-wise, this is pretty cool. That little bar uh, under the monitor there is quite cool as well. It's just, it's just a, a little bit different, um, really aggressive, and I really like it. However, it does have its downsides. If you're, say, a student and you don't want to look, you know, too hardcore in your college or uni class pulling this guy out in a lecture or something, then, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit too hardcore for you. And if you're, say, a business professional, um, yeah, this will be pretty hardcore to pull out at a meeting. People will be like, whoa, that's pretty serious. And, I mean, this thing's got some heft to it, too. So, lugging it around all day, uh, it's not going to be, you know super bad but it's definitely on the heavier side of things so it'll definitely you know it'll strengthen you up a little bit now let's uh talk about the io so looking around at the front we'll see there is absolutely nothing at all which is pretty standard for a lot of gaming laptops these days now over on the left hand side we'll see that there's uh up the front here and we'll do this live for you guys uh what i have in it right now is called the frost core so this is basically an extra fan that you can put in instead of having the uh, uh, included Blu-ray player. Now, uh, this is pretty pointless though because, I mean, at first I thought, wow, that's so cool. It's easy to take out. You just use this slide over to the uh, uh, underneath here. You just slide it like that. Pull this out the top here, and here we go. That's the uh, frost core with its little fan in there. Um, it just plugs in in the bottom, and that's supposed to, you know, give you some extra cooling. And then if you want to put the uh, uh, Blu-ray drive back in, you just get it out here. Sorry about this. Do it live. There we go. Turn it around, make sure it's all faced the right way. Now the, the computer does have to be turned off for this. And then it just drops straight in, just like that. So you can switch it out very, very easily. Which I think is a, a really cool addition. So now you have that Blu-ray player there. Now I was hoping this would actually, you know, the frost core would do something, but it doesn't. But we'll talk about that a bit later. Now moving on with the rest of the I.O. So beside it we see that it has a uh, SD card a slot, uh, headphone jack, mic jack, two USB 3.0 ports and the uh, where the wireless uh, AC plugs into. Around the back we see nothing much at all except the huge vents on the back there for the cooling. And over on the left, left hand side is the main stuff so you have uh, a secure look at the back there, Ethernet port. Uh, full size display port 1.2, I really like that. HDMI port, uh, two more USB th uh, 3.0 ports, including a USB 3.0 uh, charger port, and a uh, USB Type C Thunderbolt 3 port. So that's quite cool. Uh, it's quite a, you know, we're seeing it more now, and I really, really like that that inclusion there. It's it just adds uh, something extra to it, which which I really quite like. Now let's jump into the specs and see what this guy's packing. Specs-wise, the Predator 15's uh, got some pretty hefty stuff in it. So, uh, CPU-wise, it's got the Intel Haswell i7-6700HQ, so that's a quad-core CPU with hyper-threading, featuring a 2.6 GHz base clock and a 3.5 GHz boost clock. Now, RAM-wise, getting DDR4, of course, because this is Haswell, and uh, 16 GB worth, uh, 2x8 GB kit in there. 
Now, GPU-wise, it has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970M with 3GB of GDDR5 memory. Really good GPU. We're seeing this in a ton of laptops now, and it does a really solid job. Storage-wise, it's getting a 256GB SSD, really fast, load a lot of programs, few games on there as well, nice and snappy for your operating system. And it's also coming with a 2TB uh, HDD for all your mass storage. Communications-wise, coming with killer wireless AC, a gigabit Ethernet, and Bluetooth 4.2. Now, size-wise, it's coming in at 391 millimeters wide by 299 millimeters, you know, long or deep, depending on how you want to look at it, and 38.5 uh, millimeters high. And weight-wise, it's coming in at uh, 3.4 kilograms, which is a little bit on the high side of things. Not as far as gaming laptops go. I would call that, you know, about middle of the road these days for a gaming laptop. Maybe slightly on the higher end of things. But as far as laptops in general go, yeah, it's definitely on the higher side of things in terms of weight. Now let's talk about that screen. And uh, if you're wondering right now, it's only on uh, very, very low brightness, two above uh, the minimum. So yeah, <laughs> that's why it might look a little bit dim here. So uh, screen-wise, it's coming with a 15.6 inch IPS 1080p matte display. Uh, you might have seen that it says G-Sync, but that's only for external monitors. So that was a big letdown as well. When I saw the G-Sync, I was like, wow, this would be awesome. But yeah, no, nah, not really. Um, uh, color reproduction wise it was fantastic. Uh, it does a really really solid job. I mean most IPS panels will do a really good job when it comes to color reproduction but this one just seems uh, a tiny bit better than the, you know, the usual carry-on. Uh, IPS also means absolutely great viewing angles which is something that's more necessary for a laptop I find than maybe for a desktop monitor uh, because you're probably going to be you know showing friends things on it or you know maybe um, if you're sitting and watching a movie together or something on it, uh, if you really wanted to do that, uh, it might, you know, mean a bit more then. The, the only problem with this one is that uh, it seems like the response time is really slow. And this is something uh, I don't tend, I mean, I do notice it, but I only notice it if it's, you know, really sort of bad. Otherwise, it's not usually an issue for me. But this time, it just seems so slow. It's an issue that, you know, always seems to plague IPS panels rather than, you know, TM panels usually always have very fast response time. But, uh, yeah, this one just seemed really, really slow. So if you're maybe an enthusiast, you might notice it uh, in your gaming experience. Otherwise, you probably won't notice it with normal use, you know, so it's just fine. Uh, and, and other than that, it's an absolutely great display. So that's about the only thing I would say that's really holding it back. Soundwise is coming with SoundPound 2.1 sound system, which uh, does a really good job for the most part. Now it has two speakers in sort of the front-ish. It's not these uh, red vents in the front. Those are for the cooling. It's actually underneath them, uh, which is quite an interesting place. I mean, it's better than having them underneath because they definitely don't get muffled or say you have it on your lap or something like that. But I always find having them on top is uh, the best, but it just depends on how they're going to design the laptop, I suppose. It also has a subwoofer on the base. Uh, that's a pretty average, though. I was, uh, you know, when I saw it, I thought, oh, this will be good. It's going to have plenty of punch. And it does have a, you know, decent amount, but nothing that fantastic. So uh, the subwoofer is only about average. Uh, it has really great, uh, it still is, you know, great audio though. Um, no distortion, especially at high volumes. This this goes really, really loud. I wasn't getting it really above, you know, 40, 45% volume. I mean, anything higher than that is going to be, you know, pretty crazy. Um, you're definitely going to want to set it up though in the Dolby Audio because the dynamic setting is uh, it's pretty rubbish. So definitely set it to music mode. If you're going to be jamming some music, you're not going to be wanting this to, you know, pump the audio when you're having a house party or something like that. But it does a, it's still a pretty damn good job as far as gaming laptops go. Now let's talk about that keyboard. So this is uh, Ace's own keyboard. This isn't a Steel Series keyboard like we see on many other uh, gaming laptops out there. And it has a pretty standard uh, layout for the most part. The arrow keys are a little bit down from where they would normally be, you know, how they, they're normally in line with, say, the control key or that bottom row of keys. Uh, so that's a, a bit different. Uh, it also comes with the Acer ProZone hotkeys, which are on the top left side. Uh, and that's quite cool as well. There's a bunch of different ones you can use from default. Um, you know, just ones that will set the maximum fan speed and other things like that. But the game bar is pretty awesome. That's quite useful. Uh, that allows you to, you know, record and do other things in game, which is really nice. But to the actual keyboard itself, it's, it's really good. You know, it's got um, nice lighting to it. It looks really nice. 
it feels really good as well. They got a really nice amount of travel on it, and uh, yeah, I just have no complaints with it. Good job, Acer. I really do like it. A+. Plus. Now the touchpad. So I've had really good luck with touchpads uh, lately. We had a bunch of good ones, but this one didn't continue that trend. Um, it's not bad though, but it's it's just okay. Uh, it, it just felt a bit sticky. It was slightly inaccurate, and the right and left click had just way too much travel. You know, there is a you know I always say you know travel's good and you know keys and stuff like that but too much just makes it feel really you know mushy and not very good at all uh, so I didn't like it for that reason and when trying to you know just put your finger across it sometimes it would sort of like you know have too much grip and it makes your finger kind of skip you kind of know what I mean which makes the cursor skip and that's not really that good so a uh, touch pad wise I would only say it's kind of an okay job there now let's jump into the performance and see how it does there Performance wise it did a really solid job. Uh, this is pretty much what I was expecting considering this is very similar specs to the GS40 I just tested. So in the Intel Extreme 2 Utility benchmark testing out the CPU it scored 961 marks which is a really solid score especially for a gaming laptop. Now moving over to the Unigen Valley Extreme HD benchmark it scored 37.1 frames per second average which again is a really really solid score. And on the Unigen Heaven 4.0 benchmark on the DirectX 11 uh, setup, it scored 34.1 frames per second average, which is also really good, you know, keeping you over that 30 frames threshold. And in Shadow of Mordor, which is quite a high requirement game, it scored 54.1 frames per second average. So that's uh, really, really solid as far as um, scores go and frames. I mean, it's it's fantastic for a gaming laptop and it's going to get you by for everything you're going to need just like what I was saying with the GS40. Uh, this setup of the 6700HQ mixed with a 970M is just a really solid setup to have on a gaming laptop and it's going to get you by for all your 1080p uh, gaming needs. Now on some AAA titles such as Shadow of Mordor if you really want to keep it over 60 frames a second at all times then you might have to drop down some of the filters just a bit. Um, and that should get you by for all of that and it's you know, obviously going to depend on games but if you're just mainly going to be playing a lot of low requirement games such as League of Legends or Dota 2 uh, you'll be able to run them maxed out no worries at all and it'll do an excellent job so uh, performance wise it's uh, really really good I have no uh, real complaints there now, as far as heat and noise goes so uh, heat wise it does a uh, yeah, really good job uh, in the uh, Intel benchmark the CPU went up to 74 degrees Celsius which is you know very good there's nowhere near thermal throttling so you shouldn't have any problems with that and in the Unigen Valley benchmark uh, the GPU went up to 61 degrees Celsius and that was the same in the Heaven benchmark also so that was really really solid in terms of uh, heat now when I put the uh, extra fan in the optional fan uh, yeah, that didn't really change anything. I was expecting to see some difference in the temps, and I uh, ran these tests and I reran them to make sure, and uh, there was absolutely no difference at all. So uh, maybe that's just a gimmick, uh, you know, a good gimmick. Maybe it might have you know, lured some people to buy it. But um, yeah, uh, now nah, I, in my testing, I didn't get any difference at all with it. Now, as far as noise goes, it's uh, very silent when it's uh, you know you're just doing casual things, browsing web, watching videos, all that. It'll be dead silent, and that's really good. That's exactly what you want out of any laptop. However, when you start playing games, it does ramp up quite a bit. I would say it's a bit above average, so a bit on the noisy side. However, it still is easily drowned out by you know tuning up the uh, audio quite high, or you know just wearing a good pair of gaming headphones, and that should solve that. So. Uh, Noise-wise, yeah, a little bit disappointing there, but uh, it, it still is quite easily drowned out. Battery life-wise, I was in for a big surprise with the Predator. So uh, after using it just for casual things, you know, watching a lot of videos and browsing web and doing other things like that, I was astonished to see how good the battery life was. So um, especially for a gaming laptop. So casual use, you're going to be looking over 7 hours of battery life, which is really good. I mean, this is a 6,000 mAh battery in it. Uh, so that's really, really solid. With battery life, it always depends on, 
you know what screen brightness you have and other things like that what, what you're doing on it but um yeah for casual use you should be able to get over seven hours of use out of it uh, for sure now with gaming that does drop down quite uh, quite a bit you'll get about about four to four and a half hours out of it with gaming use depending again on what brightness you uh, you have it on and what type of game you're playing uh, but that's still really really solid so uh, battery life wise in the Predator 15 it is absolutely fantastic I, I was very very impressed with it and it's going to do you really well now software wise it's coming with Windows 10 as its operating system there's not too much pre-installed software not as much as we see from guys like say MSI where they just throw everything in there some people might be a little bit let down by that, but personally I quite like it. I'd rather have, you know, just a few good pre-installed things rather than a whole bunch of useless ones. Uh, there's Predator Sense, which is kind of like MSI's Dragon Gaming Center, so it just gives you a bit of a heads up of what's going on, but it's way more basic than <laughs> the Dragon Gaming Center, that's for sure. Now Dolby Audio lets you uh, set up the audio how you want. Just take it off dynamic because that makes everything sound horrible, so... I set it to music or movie or game depending on what you're going to be using it for the most. There's also AZ Dust Defender which reverses the fans to help get rid of dust. This is a really good idea. Expert Gamecaster for if you're wanting to stream. Acer Care Center which is uh, okay I suppose. I mean yeah some people might use it. And Killer Network Manager which helps you keep an eye on everything to do with your communications. Which brings us now to the conclusion and what do I think of the Acer Predator 15? So I think looks wise it looks absolutely badass. The styling is like seriously for gamers. Um, so that's really cool. I really quite like it. However, it's going to be too much for some people depending on what kind of environment they're going to be using it in. Now display wise I think it's really good. It's got a great color reproduction. Your IPS panel looks really really good. Viewing angles are fantastic. However, it is a bit slow for you know, some people out there might notice that uh, when they're gaming, so that's a little bit of a let down there. Now, audio is really good. I want you to get it set up right. The keyboard is absolutely fantastic, especially uh, the hotkeys up, up on the top left hand side. That's really useful. The touchpad is pretty average though, so that was a bit of a let down. It stays nice and cool, especially the laptop itself. You know, it's very, very cool to pick up even after you've just been gaming and to use. You're not going to be getting sweaty palms with this guy. And temperature wise, nothing is going to be thermal throttling at all. And it's quite quiet with uh, casual use, however, it does ramp up quite a bit as soon as you start gaming. Battery life is astonishing for a gaming laptop. This is really, really good, and I was very impressed by it. And it has some useful pre-installed software, so I would really recommend this guy. If you're in the market for a 15.6 inch gaming laptop, and you're wanting one that's, you know, going to be pretty serious um, for gaming, that is, then yeah, I would definitely recommend the Acer Predator 15. Uh, just be wary of the few negatives I point out to you, and if they're going to be a, a deal breaker for you, then maybe reconsider. But for the average user out there, I, I would still recommend it for sure. Now I thank you all for watching this video, please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.